Hello, and welcome to Geothermal University. I'm John Pendleton. Today we are going to discuss one of the most important steps in geothermal installation, flushing and purging. In this video, we will discuss flushing, purging, filtering, and water quality. Let's get started. Warning, before performing service or maintenance operation on the flow center pumps, turn off all power sources. Electrical shock could cause personal injury or death. Before applying power, make sure that all covers and screws are in place. Failure to do so could cause risk of electric shock. Once piping is complete between the unit, flow center, and the earth loop, final purging and charging of the system is needed. A flush cart with a minimum of 1.5 horsepower pump motor or larger is needed to achieve the recommended flow velocity of 2 feet per second in the loop to purge air and debris from the loop piping. If the loop has an indoor manifold and isolation valves, a smaller pump will work. Most flow center or pump failures are a result of poor water quality or debris. Construction, excavation, and fusion create the greatest opportunity for dirt and residue to enter the system. The loop must be flushed and purged in a manner that will remove any dirt, construction residue, or other contaminants while avoiding contact with the pump impellers, the water side piping, and water to refrigerant heat exchangers. Debris is easy to remove. Even on a closed loop system, water quality is an issue. The system needs to be filled with clean water. If the water on site has high iron content, high hardness, or the pH is out of balance, premature pump failure may result. Depending upon water quality, it may need to be brought in from offsite. We strongly recommend a simple water test be performed on every installation. Refer to the installation manual for our water quality guidelines. When purging, use a 100 micron bag filter until air bubbles are removed. Remove the 100 micron bag, replace it with a 1 micron bag, and restart the flushing. If these particulates are not removed, they will damage bearing surfaces of water lubricated circulators or pumping modules. The flush ports located on the flow center provide access to the piping system for the flush cart. The three-way valves on the flow center include direction indicators on the valves which determine the flow path. See figure 8. A 3 8 socket drive is required to operate the three-way valves. The valves will turn in either direction 360 degrees. Make sure during this process that the valves are in the same position so that air does not become trapped in the system. Intertech recommends a double flush filtering method during purging. We'll flush the geothermal system and the earth loop separately. Connect flush cart hoses to the flow center flush ports using proper adapters, AGA, FP, and then connect water supply to hose connection on return line of flush cart. Turn both three-way valves on the flow center to flush ports and loop position. Turn on water supply. Prior to filling and flushing, the water quality should have been determined to be proper quality. As the reservoir fills up, turn the pump on and off, sucking the water level down. Do not allow the water level to drop below intake fitting to the pump. Once the water level remains above the water outlet in the reservoir, leave the pump running continuously. Once the water level stays above the T in the reservoir, turn off the water supply. This also allows observation of air bubbles. Run the pump for a minimum of two hours for proper flushing and purging. Depending on system and loop size, it may take longer. It helps to deadhead the pump every so often and observe the water level in the reservoir. Once all the air is removed, there should not be more than one to two inch drop of water level in the reservoir. If there is more than two inch drop, air is still trapped in the system. This is the only way to tell if air is still trapped in the system. To deadhead the pump, shut off the return side ball valve on the flush cart. This will create a surge in pressure to the system piping, helping to get the air bubbles moving do not reverse flow during flushing. Next, we'll flush the geothermal unit. Turn off the pump on the flush cart and turn both three-way valves to the unit in the flush port positions. Turn the pump back on. It may be necessary to turn the water supply back on 
to keep the water level in the reservoir above the return T. This should only take five to 10 minutes to purge the unit. Once this is done, the entire system is now full of water and the flush cart pump may be turned off. If the antifreeze was not added when the loop was being filled, it will be ne necessary to follow the next few steps. Turn both three-way T's back to the original position for flushing the loop only. Close the return side ball valve on the flush cart. Connect hose to the return side discharge line and run it to a drain. Open the ball valve on discharge line on flush cart. Turn pump on until water level is sucked down just above the water outlet in the reservoir and turn pump off. Important, be sure not to suck air back into the system. Fill the reservoir back up with antifreeze. Repeat these steps until all the antifreeze is in the system and reservoir. Turn the discharge line ball valve off at the flush cart. Turn the return line ball valve back to the on position. It may be necessary to add some water into the reservoir to keep the water level above the return T so that the solution does not foam. The system must be run for three to four hours to mix the antifreeze and water in the reservoir. After adding the antifreeze, in addition to purging the air, the flush cart is used to completely mix the antifreeze. The valves should be open to the loop only when mixing the antifreeze. If the loop and geothermal water circuit are flushed and purged simultaneously, the antifreeze may short circuit through the geosystem and not completely mix. It may take several hours to completely mix water and antifreeze. Check the antifreeze level ever so often to ensure the proper amount was added to the system. Once all the air and debris has been removed and the antifreeze has been added, the system is ready for final pressurization. Turn one of the three-way valves so that it is open to all three ports, the unit, the loop, and the flush port. Turn the other valve so it is only open to the loop and flush port. Pressure is also applied to the hose kit in this arrangement. Turn the flush cart pump on and allow the system to start circulating. With the pump running, turn the return line ball valve to the off position on the flush cart, deadheading the pump. There should be a maximum of one to two inches of drop in the water level in the reservoir. This only takes about three to five seconds. Next, turn the supply line ball valve to the off position on the flush cart. This isolates the flow center from the flush cart. Now that the system is isolated from the reservoir, the pump can be turned off. Do not open the main flush cart ball valve yet. We use city or well pressure to stretch the pipe and get maximum pressurization. Connect the water supply back to the discharge line hose connection and open the ball valve. Turn on the water supply and leave it on for 20 to 30 minutes. This will stretch the pipe properly to ensure that the system will not have a flat loop during cooling operation. Once the loop is pressurized, the recommended pressure on initial startup is 50 to 70 PSI. Turn the water supply off. Maximum pressure should never exceed 100 PSI under any circumstances. Turn the three-way valves on the flow center back to the normal operation mode, which closes the flush port connections. Open the ball valves on the flush cart to relieve pressure on the hoses and disconnect the hoses from the flow center. Pressurized flow centers and Grunfoss UP series pumps need a minimum of three PSI on the suction side of the pump to operate. Maximum operating pressure is 100 PSI. Important, loop static pressure will fluctuate with the seasons. Pressures will be higher in the winter months than during the summer months. In the cooling mode, the heat pump is rejecting heat, which relaxes the pipe. This fluctuation is normal and needs to be considered when charging and pressurizing the system initially. Typical operating pressures of an earth loop are 15 to 50 PSI. On flow center initial startup, it will be necessary to burp the pumps. Bleeding should be done without the pumps running before startup. Burping bleeds the air in the pumps. Start the system and remove the bleed screw from the back side of the pumps. This allows any trapped air to bleed out. It also floods the pump shaft and keeps the pumps cool. Important, failure to do this could result in premature pump failure. 
A few last suggestions on flushing and purging a loop. For safety purposes, we do not recommend pure alcohol on site. It is highly flammable. We recommend the use of pre-mixed antifreeze. If you are using a glycol when it's cold, you should not pour it because of micro bubbles and foaming issues. It is best to pump the glycol if possible. This is especially important if you are transferring from a large barrel into smaller buckets and then the cart. Your loop and geothermal system are now flushed, purged, and filtered. You are now ready to heat and cool. Thank you for watching Geothermal University.